Kim Jong Nam's murder suspects charged in court. Vincent Tan sells off his football clubs. Hi, I'm Desiree Gasper, and this is Cover News. Vietnamese Duan Thi Huang and Indonesian Siti Aisha were brought to court this morning to face murder charges related to the killing of North Korean Kim Jong Nam. At 9:30 a.m. and 9:40 a.m. respectively, the duo were then sent separately to the Sepang Magistrates Court by two vehicle convoys. Siti was brought out before Sessions Court Judge Harit Shah Muhammad Yasin, and she nodded that she understood the charge read out to her. Duan also said she understood the charge, which was read out to her. No plea was recorded. Gui Sun Seng, who represented Siti, asked the court to grant a gag order against police and potential witnesses from issuing statements to the press to ensure a fair trial for his client, a request granted by the judge. Her eyes were red. Was she crying? I am not able to say. To say for the fact that her eyes are red, they appear to be crying. Of course, they are frightened and they are saying that they are innocent. Indonesia's Deputy Ambassador to Malaysia, Adriano Irwin, said the suspects would be represented in the trial that he expects to run for a long time. Itu umumnya dan ketiga, jaga kesehatan kepada dia karena ini prosesnya cukup lama dan minta dia untuk tetap uh, melakukan salat lah. Duan's lawyer S. Selvam said his client had pleaded her innocence throughout their meeting. She looks well to you, she's not sick. <coughs> 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 she's very sound and there's no issues. I don't think so there's much complaint there. She didn't ask for anything, any request? I'm going to see you tomorrow. I'll be... She to an interpreter or in English? In English. What time did you no, she had an interpreter, but she also spoke English. She's well versed in English. The murder cases have been transferred to the Shah Alam High Court and will be tried together. The next date for mention has been fixed on April 13th. While the duo faced their charges, social media was abuzz with a video of Duan appearing at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport too. China Press reported that the duo were taken to the airport at 9 a.m. for facial recognition and verification. The, the report said that they revisited the scene where they smeared Kim's face with a poison during the February 13th incident. The police then compared their appearances with that captured by the closed-circuit television images at the airport. Meanwhile, China Press visited Duan's family house in Vietnam's Nam Dinh province where the relatives were trying to follow the murder case on social media. They watched the hour-long event closely via Facebook Live but they could not see the accused. However, they said they could feel the tense moments at the courthouse. In Jakarta, when the China Press reporter went to City's house, her family was not around. Neighbours said that the family members had been taken to an undisclosed location on Tuesday night. Siti had said that she carried out the attack on Kim Jong-nam, thinking that it was part of a reality TV show prank. Health Minister Datuk Sri Dr S Subramaniam has stressed that Malaysia will only release the body of Kim Jong-nam once DNA profiling is done on his next of kin. Dr. Subramaniam said that the North Korean government could continue asking for the body to be released to them, but it is not necessary for Malaysia to agree to their request. He also said that his ministry had already concluded that a poison called VX nerve agent caused Kim's death. Because of death, we have already identified, established and announced that it's due to the nerve poison so that is the poison of death. cause of death. We will not change it. We will release it to the people uh, who are the rightful relatives of the person. Renowned Muslim preacher Dr. Zakir Naik has claimed the media spotlight again. This time he is the centre of a court order by 19 people, including Hindraf Chairman P. Vedamurthy and lawyer Siti Kasim against the government and four others. 
they hope to get a court order to declare Dr. Zakir a threat to national security. And this action uh, is filed as we believe our national leaders have failed in their duty to protect our country from an undesirable person who is a preacher of hate currently roaming free in Malaysia. Zakir Naik is known internationally for his speeches which encourages radicalism and incites terrorism and ill feelings among the different, among the different uh, religious groups. He is surely a threat to our national security, public order and to the peaceful coexistence of multiracial Malaysia. The plaintiffs are seeking to immediately revoke Dr. Zakir's status as a permanent resident if it has been granted to him. After a successful four-day state visit to Malaysia, Saudi Arabia's King Salman Abdul Aziz Al Saud left for Indonesia this morning. During his visit, both countries' state-owned oil companies Saudi Aramco and Petronas signed the major joint venture to develop an oil refinery in Johor with an investment of 30 billion ringgit. Saudi Arabia has also agreed to consider Malaysia's request to increase the number of its Hajj pilgrims at 30,000 this year and the setting up of the King Salman Centre for Global Peace in support of Malaysia's effort to stamp out the narrative brought by extremists. King Salman now heads to Jakarta where his delegation will sign a pact to combat terrorism and discuss the setting up of more Islamic schools in Indonesia. At the groundbreaking ceremony for King Henry VIII College in Cyberjaya, Deputy Education Minister Datuk Chong Sin Woon urged parents who plan to register their children into Year 1 in 2018 to start applying online now to avoid issues. He also hit out at Penang Chief Minister Lim Guan Ng over his recent statements, saying that this showed his ignorance in harping on issues related to the education system. Lim had reportedly lashed out at Chong, saying that schools would have been able to receive funds last year if the ministry had released them on time. In other news, Malaysian tycoon Tan Sri Vincent Tan is selling Cardiff City Football Club and his stake in other clubs in the United States, Bosnia and Belgium. Bloomberg reported that since taking over Cardiff City in 2010, the Bajaya Group founder has spent more than £180 million on the team. In 2015, he lost £8 million on revenue of £38 million. Under Tan's ownership, Cardiff City was promoted to the English Premier League in the 2013-2014 season, but relegated back to the Championship one year later. He also led Bosnia's top club, FK Sarajevo, to win the Premier League in 2015. Tan's selling price for Cardiff City is around £15 million, the Bloomberg report said. Following up on the Sabah Water Department graft case, Likas Assemblyman Jun Wong filed a report at the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission headquarters calling for a probe into six projects related to the scandal. He said the projects were given to seven concessionaires, including four main contractors and three subcontractors since 2011. He said the total value of the projects would reach about 2.44 billion ringgit for the 20-year deals. In local entertainment news, the remains of singer and television host Ari Malik was laid to rest at the Taman Ibu Kota Muslim Cemetery in Kuala Lumpur, midnight Tuesday. The bubbly 46-year-old celebrity lost the battle against ovarian cancer and breathed her last at 7.17pm at the Ampang Hospital. Ari, who leaves behind her husband Sharul Bromo and their three children, had undergone chemotherapy and surgery in May 2016 since her diagnosis about a year ago. Her artist friends say despite her own sufferings, she would cheer up other ward mates. 
They added that they did not only lose a friend but also her signature infectious smile forever. In world news, Myanmar's military has defended its crackdown on the Rohingya minority, saying that it is a lawful counter-insurgency operation. In a rare news conference in Naypitao, Myanmar's top general directly addressed the mounting accusations of human rights abusers. <laughs> He said that the military had formed an investigation team to identify if there was in fact human rights violations or abuse by the security forces. The United Nations estimates that more than 70,000 Rohingya have fled Myanmar to Bangladesh following the military operation. US President Donald Trump's first speech to the Congress was unusually free from the usual attacks and fiery language. In his address, a more toned-down Trump promised that he would come through on his major campaign pledges and urged Democrats to work with him in instituting his agenda. I am here tonight to deliver a message of unity and strength, and it is a message deeply delivered from my heart. Everything that is broken in our country can be fixed. Every problem can be solved, and every hurting family can find healing and hope. He also spoke about tax cuts, cheaper health insurance, increasing military spending and bringing back jobs from overseas. Uber CEO Travis Kalanick has apologised after a video emerged of him repeatedly swearing at one of the Uber drivers. The outburst occurred after the driver, Fauzi Kamel, who was driving Kalanick at the time, complained that his income was dropping due to Uber's constantly changing fare structure. In an email to Uber staff, Kalanick said he was ashamed of his behaviour and admitted that he needed to grow up. Londoners dressed as Batman, Darth Vader and even Minions had a flipping good time at the annual Great Spitalfields Pancake Race on Tuesday. Oh, it's a proper race, yes. And over the years, we've had we've had trips and accidents and, and lots of things like that. So, you know, um, people take it seriously, although it's a lot of fun, of course. We had a game plan. Yeah. We did, yeah. We, uh, we've been training for quite a couple of weeks now. Yeah, I woke up this morning, had a good breakfast. I know you did as well. Yeah. My stretches. Did some and pancakes as well, just to get in the mood. Exactly. Get it well, energy. Like the key is just toast it and then I start running. Yeah. Don't don't run while you toast, because otherwise it might just get behind. Maybe lose it. Um, but yeah. No, it's definitely a skill. I mean, that's why we got chosen from, uh, from our office. Our office. The race marks Shrove Tuesday and raises money for London's air ambulance. And that's a wrap for Kappa News. Good night.